How's it going guys? I ordered the newish Mora Fin. I got it from a website called Survival Supplies Australia, which I can certainly endorse as a very quick shipper and uh, had a good range, well at the time, for what I was looking for. So the Fin arrived today and this is going to be my first little batch of initial impressions. I'm gonna talk briefly about it and then we'll get to the testing and reviewing of the next few filmings. So when you look at the Mora Fin, it's a uh, Quite a stylish little knife. Uh, in terms of a neat little somewhat custom or archaic or old fashioned looking little fixed blade and uh, yeah, sitting in its little black leather sheath that it comes in, you can certainly see they're going for a bit more of a prestige style product. And that of course continues when you take it out of its leather sheath and uh, observe the rather nice kind of slightly modern-ish looking black blade, which is as a stainless steel knife, only for um, show really, rather than serving any purpose regarding stainlessness or whatever. Um, but yeah, it is a kind of striking sort of mix of traditional and modern. And I think that's exactly what they were going for. So the handle is a waxed ash. So that's a uh, type of wood. Ash is often used in handles for long tools like axes and whatnot. It's a resilient and uh, pretty hard and durable wood. And uh, it is, yeah, pretty historic uh, handle material, so it's a fair choice to go for for a handle. And the wax is just to make it somewhat sealed, so it's not going to swell up the moment it gets wet. And I'm sure the the wax is pretty well soaked in, pretty uh, well impregnated. You can certainly sort of uh, smell it on the on the wood. So uh, definitely going in there. Uh, this is the smaller, sort of thinner version of this four knife set. So these are four pretty handsome knives. Oh, except for maybe the cleaver thing, in my opinion, that looks a bit weird, but largely it's a pretty handsome knife set. And this is the the more slender, light duty one, which was, uh, which I bought because basically, I know I've got too many of every kind of knife, but lighter duty, little carving style blades, are knives that I guess I don't have complete saturation of ownership in. When I pull out my knife uh, drawer, most of them are in the uh, four to five inches, and this is like a little three and a half inch blade, nice and thin, so I thought, might be more up my alley of what I might be realistically needing to use a knife for if I was to need a new knife at all. Which I didn't. Anyway, um, reviewing the blade, the thing I'm most interested about is the, and you may have noticed from my, um, what I assume is going to be a bit of a uh, an attention grabbing uh, video title and thumbnail, uh, the steel. Is it a trash steel? Well. In a way, it is a trash steel because it is a thrown away steel. This is a recycled stainless steel. This is what more are after, I suppose. They're going fully sustainable or you know, it's close to flying as close to that sustainable sun as they can with these guys here and recycling Swedish stainless steel. As a steel nerd, that is a very frustrating term for me because it's too vague. <laughs> I don't, what's it recycled from? There are so many questions. This just raises further questions. So I know it's stainless, that's great. Is it just all their old blade blanks that they that they maybe make uh, errors on? And so it's just 13C26 or 14C28N, depending on whether from the Garberg or the, or the standard Mora stock. I don't know. And I can't really find a straight answer. So I'm gonna do a bit of steel testing. What I can say is that from the factory, it's come very, very sharp. And it appears to basically be a true zero ground Scandi. Now, when you really look at a Scandi edge, Often there is like a tiny little micro bevel and I believe that's usually almost impossible to avoid once the knife has hit any kind of strop or buff or any kind of um, polishing, finishing usually adds the tiniest of micro bevels. But for all intents and purposes, you can treat this basically like a zero ground Scandi. So that's great for carving, but you do need to be aware that they are not the most durable edges. They are basically like if you were sharpening a V edge on a knife and you just backed that angle really far down, you did get yourself a Scandi grind on basically any knife. And you don't do that generally because it's a little bit fragile if you're gonna be accidentally hitting into, you know, knots of, uh, knots of wood or, you know, bits of uh, staples or, you know, whatever, things that can challenge and roll a knife edge. So we'll see how it goes. That will be the true test of the steel because Scandi edges, it's a really common grind but you need well done steel to hold a good Scandi edge. Like it's it's a case where you don't just want junk steel in a Scandi. It at least needs to be something with a label on it, in my opinion. So we'll see how this recycled stainless steel goes. So this film's gonna have a lot of testing on the knife. It's gonna have a bit of use on it. I intend to film the review thoughts 
uh, in about a week or so's time after I've used it for a good stint. And then of course, depending how that goes, it might be deeming of a follow-up as well. So the uh, Mora Fin uh, is the knife of the day. This costs about $300 in Australia. Uh, I think in the States, it's even still about 215 or something, or maybe this is the $160 one. Anyone who knows Mora's knows that's a lot for Mora. So this guy has a couple of things it needs to needs to prove to me to give the old recommendation. One is that it's worth that price, and the second is about that stainless recycled steel. So gonna be an interesting film, I hope. Stay with it and let's get to it. All right, so some raw first impressions uh, off the top of my head. I wish the sheath was a proper sheath. This feels very much like just something to, to transport the knife in rather than to wear it in. I think this is expensive enough, Mora, for you to send the little dangler extension with it. Uh, you're not sending much knife or much sheath for the money. Not saying that I don't know, I, the, the value isn't somewhere hidden, but from a customer perspective, having a complete wearable product would be appreciated. It's the first impression. The second impression that it's a really handsome little knife that is immediately very well put together. It's, uh, this mine doesn't have any voids, cracks, um, problems on the handle. I understand a lot of these handles, if not all of them are hand finished entirely. Um, so seems really nice so far. Um, really, really sharp out of the box, which is you know pretty typical of Amora. Um, very, very sharp paper slicing edges. Um, so yeah, that's really, really good. Uh, yeah, overall, if I didn't know how much it was and just knife in hand, I'd think immediately, yep, yeah, the very nice little knife, very sharp, uh, feels you know sturdy despite its thinness, which is another impression I do like. I like when com companies go, I think it's a bit of a risk going with a thin knife, especially in today's knife crowd. Everyone seems to want a overbuilt knife, and this is certainly not. It's certainly purpose driven, and I'm certainly not going to knock the knife for fragility. I'll do some basic toughness tests to make sure the steel isn't flawed. But really, um, my expectations on a thin knife like this are that it's going to be used for carving, some slicing, and whatnot, rather than you know survival type prying, levering, um, battening, I guess, all that sort of thing. So my expectations uh, of the durability are just that it's um, going to stand up to normal wear type jobs, and I think it will. It feels very robust, rugged, solid uh, for a knife of this style. Can't get past that price. I'm initially, my first thoughts are, well, this is about the same price as. A SE4, a US made SE4 in S35 VN steel, uh, or a Falkenhaven F1, which is a Japanese made, Swedish designed uh, VG10 laminated knife. Um, both steels, which are, even if this is the 14C28, more steel in each knife, both made in a sort of first world, very, very much first world country, and um, yeah, at about the same price. So those are things in my head immediately I can't quite that I need to sort of investigate further, I guess. So those are my first impressions so far. Knife overall, as a tool, as an object, seems pretty nice, but there's a few other stuff that I need to uh, get my head around. Let's get testing. Let's get let's start with a rope cut test, right? Let's start with, a, start with a rope cut test of this factory edge, and that will give me some idea as to how long it might last, and then I'll get to figuring out how to maybe put a uniform edge on this and perhaps another Scandi knife and see how they go. But let's give it a crack um, just to show you, of course, from the start, paper slicing. We'll do a quick um, sisal test until the knife no longer slices a hill sheet of paper like that, and we'll see where we're roughly starting from. So I'm feeling the knife very suddenly stopped biting into the rope. So I'm feeling like probably it's flattened out on the very edge. It's not a easy press through the rope anymore. So, and it did sort of start to tear uh, when slicing, it hit a hiccup. So I'm gonna call, I don't usually do this test on Scandi knives by the way. So it's a bit of a, um, bit of an odd yardstick, but uh, yeah, it's 75 passes from a really sharp factory edge, it's now no longer slicing the held sheet of paper. So uh, yeah, I, mm, okay, uh, all right. Funny example, all right, let's go. Um, 
This is gonna be overkill, but we'll see how it goes next to Magna Cut. I'm sorry, I know, Magna Cut, different, but uh, this might be some kind of example on a knife that's also a Scandi grind. So we'll see how that goes. And it's not gonna be, it's kind of apples and oranges, but it's also at least showing something, perhaps. Let's see. Oh, it's in my sharpener, what a tip. All right, so Magna Cut on a Scandi edge, like just to show um, maybe a rough, a rough, comparison just to start with. So super sharp. Check the chair up. So still really sharp. It might be starting to slightly dull. Maybe, yeah, it's probably getting slightly dull. 300, right? And that's just was like, I hadn't just sharpened this. This wasn't factory pristine edge. It was from my edge, which, you know, I did it on stones. I'm not particularly good at it. Like I'm just, mainly this is to illustrate that, yeah, in case you're thinking, well, that's not what the knife's for. It's not for cutting rope onto a board. That's why the edges dull pretty quick. Uh, yeah, I mean, Magna Cut steel with a Scandi edge. No worries at all, still like, still crazy sharp, really. This guy's still sharp, like it's still not, I wouldn't say this is dull, but um, there you go, it's not shaving hair anymore. Not shaving hair anymore where it was cutting and down the end it still definitely is, so where I wasn't cutting with. So yeah, it's lost its edge from 75 cuts, like that crazy sharp edge. Ah, nothing, it doesn't mean a huge amount, but it's, I'm still just trying to illustrate that yeah, it's by no means is it seeming like it's gonna be a, a great deal with the steel from the beginning. So we'll see how it goes in the review. Try not to try not to shelve. Uh, I'm trying to shelve as many of my preconceptions as I can, but that's one of my main first impression concerns is how the steel is going to go. So we'll see. This knife didn't advertise itself as having a flat spine, um, but I thought I'd try it anyway. I know one of the other ones in this range does. It did seem flat-ish, but uh, it was fairly difficult getting uh, any sort of workable sparks off that back edge. And then of course, I got out my Mora Spark just to see how that went. And well, as you can see, All right. I guess that's the answer there then. Fire gone, cat sitting by it. Basil just in goblin mode. What are you doing, Basil? What are you doing? What is this?
So I went into a more traditional YouTube-y bushcraftery simulator for a minute here, just doing some splitting and some feather sticking. This is just light kindling wood. This isn't like my crazy Aussie red gum or anything that's going to ruin a knife. This is just like the basic level of durability I would expect from a knife of about this size. And it's still full tan, you know, it should still be fine. And it definitely was, it withstood this sort of stuff, which is about as far as I would realistically fault the knife for not achieving, but it's fine. And then just for like two reasons, for both like using that edge, I want to see the, the steel's endurance, and also for like ergonomic assessment. I did this as like a sort of somewhat prolonged, just carving feather sticking session, and I just did it in comparison with like a standard Mora Companion. So the Mora Companion's like this typical $30 Mora, so literally about one eighth of the price of one of these. And this I believe is in either the same steel or the 12, no, the 13C27 steel, or the 12C26 steel, depending on how old a companion is, if you got a Mora stainless. So, interesting to see like these two compared to each other in a few different ways, but maybe uh, in terms of mainly comfort, um, we're looking at sort of how the knife works in the hand, doing kind of these jobs where the wood, you know, it's, a, it's an organic material, it's not uniform, it's not like slicing cardboard, you're going to hit hiccups, you're going to get twists, you're going to get little knocks, it's really going to kind of work its grip out. And frankly, the companion is more comfortable to use for stuff like this. It just is. It's a time-proven handle, the companion handle. It's, it fits most hands, especially my hand, really, really well. Sure, it doesn't look as nice as like a piece of ash wood, but the ash wood's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit wider, a little bit shorter. And so the bit that is held in the palm kind of tends to move around a little bit more. And that's sort of also compounded by the tang of the knife all the way around slightly protruding from the handle like it's not flush so you do feel that slight ridge uh, after you know a few minutes of sustained repetitive use so the Mora Companion is actually more enjoyable to use long term. So this knife has pretty typical qualities of Scandinavian grinds. In my opinion the Scandinavian grind is really good for woodcrafting, woodworking, sort of light, stock removal, that sort of thing. That's where it excels. It's a fair utility cutting grind, so it'll do like your boxes, your your pipe, your rope, that sort of thing. It'll do that well enough. It'll be fine at that. And then it actually, I feel like Scans is just generally bad food prep knives. They have a, an angle to them generally, just from the extreme edge angle, graduating to a flat usually splits and sticks in food, so splits apart and breaks apart the food rather than slices it apart, and uh, makes for unsatisfying food prep use. I understand if you're on the knife out anywhere, there's a Scandi knife, you're gonna make do and you're probably not gonna be too bothered, but compared to other grinds, those are what I think the qualities are of Scandi grinds. And this one is very typical of all those qualities. All right, so with regard to the edge, t edge retention of the steel, um, throughout the week's use, I've Noticed it's held an edge, it's held a working edge fine, about similar to a companion. I'm going to estimate that it's probably, the recycled steel is probably recycled old companion blanks or, yeah, there's scrap, perhaps the scrap steel that Mora would throw away after they make companions or something similar to that, I would guess, just from my feeling about how it's working. I can't do, unfortunately, a wrote knife for knife test. That test before the Magna Cup, that's not particularly intending to be numbers focused. That was more just to show that Magna Cut or that Scandi grinds can do rope cutting and do get, get you know, decent-ish results, whatever. So um, what I figured out, I, I hooked them both up to my sharpening systems and um, uh, the angles are just too different for me to really test. So the companion, this is a companion heavy duty, I think, which is slightly thicker like almost a three millimeter thick rather than the companion, which is about two and a half, I believe. And um, these are 17 degrees, the bevel, the edge bevel going into the flat. And this guy's about 15, just just above 15, probably dead on 15, you know, give or take, uh, before that goes onto its flat. So I would have to seriously reprofile um, either of these knives and um, to be able to do like a one for one test. Um, that may happen in the future, but I think right now, I don't think it's super necessary. I think this is pretty obviously just a lower end stainless steel, probably a version or fairly similar to the 12C27 or, uh, or similar. And um, it seems like they've got an okay enough 
reheat treatment of it or however it goes whether the steel was already heat treated then they've melted it all down redid it i don't know how as i said it's frustrating with little detail on the steel but uh yeah it's performed fine like it's not it's definitely gone dull and it's been touched up a couple of times on a strop um i will probably use my bench stones for this i'm getting better at bench stone sharpening and i found most of my sharpening systems going these low angles on these scanty grinds you start to sort of bump back onto the sharpening system um it's they're not really intended for full scandy edges so stones however are perfect for full scandy edges so that's what i'll be using to maintain that stones and generally just a strop so yeah interesting uh interesting steel i as a steel nerd i wish there was more information on it but i think i'm just gonna guess my feeling is that it's uh yeah it's probably the 12c27 you know maybe 14c28 i don't know if they can blend it or whatever's going on i would say it's just more a stainless steel the bits that fall on the shop floor repurposed that's my feeling anyway so this pricey little knife with the high level of style um you know it's a competent user it's well presented it's well executed who is this knife for? I don't think this knife is for any of you or for me. People who would watch knife videos, people who are sort of obsessive over the details, who, you know, the knife enthusiasts. This isn't a knife for knife enthusiasts. I think there's admirable qualities to projects like this, but I think this is just the project that the company is on. And I think it's the kind of project you do for Mora. Mora made this knife for Mora. It's the kind of knife you make, you enter it into the 2023 Sustainability Awards to get yourself a nice little badge that you can put at the bottom of your website and perhaps get some press for in a different kind of field. And you know what? I completely understand knife companies doing. I've always said, so knives on the whole need to try and enter the world from lots of different angles, apart from selling to like the weapons bros, the bushcraft bros and the knife nerds, you know? So I think this is a way of probably more are doing that. People who are perhaps outdoorsy, but aren't even aware of outdoors knives. And that is a large amount of people, believe it or not. Like lots of bushwalkers, lots of outdoorsy, um, you know, boaters and fishers and campers don't even really give knives a second thought. This is the sort of thing I could see more of because of its earthy credentials, getting into the magazines, getting into the featured sections of, of camping magazines and, and getting featured at trade jets of caravanning shows and things like that. They're going to go with the sustainability arc. They're going to go with the recycled steel. They're going to go with the, the you know, the natural handle materials. And the, the they've got these great long stories with old timey people on the website. They're leading with all that sort of stuff. It's a knife that Mora ma are making for Mora, for their development of their brand. And Whilst that, of course, is meaning that it's not for me. It doesn't have enough detail for me. It, the value there isn't there for me. I don't, I don't see the monetary value in this for me, a knife nerd who is probably just going to use it like, you know, every other knife in my collection and uh, just get some you know, decent wear on it. And in, in that, you know, comparison to lots of my other knives, say knives are the same price, the Falcon even F1. Uh, and these aren't the same spec, of course. Uh, the SD, where are you, SE? The SE, the S35, VN, SE4, you know? You get so much more knife for about the same price as this guy. And then even if you do just want a great little bushcraft knife, well, frankly, a Mora Companion feels better in the hand and is um, in probably the same steel as well and costs an eighth of the price, right? So that's how someone like me in the knife hobby is going to look at this knife, I think. But... It's definitely going to get them some cred and it's that type of cred which can for the, be for the benefit of the overall brand and maybe even for the overall knife world the more quote unquote normies like every average everyday people enjoy and use knives the less scary they become for everyone and maybe that's in a, in a long game sense kind of an admirable thing and something that we can all benefit from in the end but i can't quite i can't quite get past this price and i'm not quite seeing the ingredients lining up even if the the processes do add expense which i'm sure they do it's as simple as i don't think that my 260 dollars was well spent on this however my 260 dollars or 207 dollars was very well spent on this and again not comparing purposes but i'm just comparing amount of knife you know story behind knife this is american made this is you know made in sweden like it's not comparative you know so Anyway, that's kind of my take on it. Um, I don't knock Mora for trying, but I kind of think I, I'm not surprised at all by the, the knife guys 
probably having a similar conclusion that I have uh, with the blade. So uh, there you go. That's my thoughts on the Mora Finn, probably the larger Mora Ash Wood series. And uh, yeah, hope you've enjoyed. Interested to hear thoughts. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye. And remember, the best way to contribute to the health of the planet is by not buying doubles, triples, quadruples and further multiples of tools you already have for the sake of filling the void which all of your fleshy kind are cursed with. The most environmentally friendly knife is the one you don't buy needlessly. Well, Bricky, as someone who's been here long before and will be here long after I am gone, I suppose we should all take your word for that. Bye-bye.